-hmm. Meanwhile, one of the states that uh, Pete was in this yes. past weekend <laughs> and it. Ainsley is from in South Carolina. And that is where Senator Tim Scott said that there's, there's somebody nobody's talking about regarding the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. And that is a guy he wrote a book with. Watch. I'm going to recommend Trey Gowdy be one of the folks that I would have strong, a strong recommendation for him serving on the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. I hope that the president will be open to that. A guy who will call balls and strikes and not choose a side, even when he's an elected member at this time in our nation's history, yeah, that's, that's hard to find. You know, he would be a unique choice because he's one of the few pe people we've actually seen um, Kind of from the bench, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. at those mm -hmm. hearing rooms right. where he's interrogating the guests. Very outspoken, uh, yeah. You know, and, and and so you're able to see the give and take. And he's a he's a great prosecutor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, might be he's... might be a good justice. Yeah, he and Tim Scott are best friends. Now, the president did say he was going to pick someone off that list of 25. Yep. But I understand. I think mm -hmm. the list has been amended he since then. He expanded the added list. Added five more. Added five more. And we've had guests on this morning that say they think they're hearing through the grapevine. He's narrowed it down to five, and Trey Gowdy's not on that list. I think there's going to be a lot of code talking here because no one, the, the balance of the court on, on social issues is at stake. And the left has a huge stake in it, and the right has a huge stake in it. And with a guy like Justice Kennedy, who was a conservative, nominated by Reagan slowly moved and became a liberal that's why the list was created on the, for folks mm -hmm. that supported Trump it's hey these are guys that are strict constructors not right. obsessed with abortion or Roe v Wade but the Constitution was written not to be living or reinterpreted but to be understood as the baseline of our law so uh, it, well, and <laughs> this is gonna you think our rhetoric and political rhetoric is high right now yeah. wait until this pick comes out and everyone scrutinizes where they've been on these issues Good when Ronald Reagan appointed Justice Kennedy or not nominated him. That was his third nominee because the first two didn't get through. So the president yes. has doesn't have long or the Senate doesn't have long to approve this person before the midterm because, you know, they take a summer break. So the president will decide in July they'll come back and vote in the fall and they're not going to have time to go through two or three different names. So sure. he's going to have to pick someone yeah. that and, will be able to pass through the Harry Senate. Harry Reid changed the rules. So it's he a did. different game these days in, this, in the uh, Senate. So right now the White House is going through everybody's background to make sure that they would uh, pass, pass muster. Through. But yeah, keep in right. mind, most of them have already been approved yep. by the U.S. Senate. President Trump's apparent shortlist for the next Supreme Court justice getting even shorter. The president tweeted shortly ago, I interviewed four very impressive people yesterday. On Monday, I will be announcing my decision for the justice on the U.S. Supreme Court. And that list, it started with 25, now down to just a handful. Joining us now is Harvard Law professor and constitutional law expert Alan Dershowitz. He's also the author of the book, The Case Against Impeaching Trump. Professor, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Uh, what, thank do you, you. what is the president looking for the most in these final candidates? Well, the president makes these kinds of decisions based on his personal interaction with the individuals more than recommendations. Obviously, he's going to take into account the recommendations as well. I hope he's looking for a libertarian conservative, a true conservative who elevates the rights of individual over the power of government. A true conservative also respects precedent, doesn't come to the court with an agenda, with a list of issues that he wants to see changed. A true conservative is not a judicial activist. So I think he can broaden his base, help unite the country. If he picks a true conservative who really believes in liberty and who believes in precedent, that's what true conservatism is on the bench. And of course, uh, Professor, uh, the president and his supporters have also made it very clear he needs somebody who is a constitutionalist, somebody who looks at the Constitution and doesn't just uh, make it up uh, according to how they feel about the issue. And what one of that's the, absolutely right. What, one of the the names that has been floated, and apparently uh, he met with Judge Amy Barrett yesterday from the Seventh Court. Uh, she was a, uh, a clerk for Scalia. A brilliant legal mind, but apparently a lot of top Democrats don't like her because she is very religious and they think she would be uh, somebody to undo Roe v. Wade. And so that's their play. They're going to block anybody who they think uh, the president wants because that's ultimately his end game. Well, you know, the Constitution says that no religious test shall ever be required for any office under the United States. It would be unconstitutional and immoral 
to take into account negatively a person's religious views. Let's remember that back in the bad old days when the liberal United States Supreme Court uh, uh, upheld a statute mandatorily sterilizing mentally challenged people, the only dissent, only dissent came from a religious Catholic whose religious views wouldn't allow him wow. to accept mandatory sterilization. So true conservatives who oppose overreaching by the state can serve the interests of all Americans. I don't know this particular uh, candidate, so I'm not going to comment on her. But I would just say that in any way disqualifying somebody for their religious views. Mm -hmm. Now, it's different if they say they're going to impose their religious mm -hmm. views sure. on the rest of the country. A person should be entitled to practice their religion freely. But the Constitution is not religious in nature. It separates church and state. Yep. It calls for freedom of religion. And so the proper role of religion is in personal decisions, not in decisions by a justice. Briefly, last question, do you expect this president to stick to the list that he released before? He's always one who can come up with surprises. <laughs> um, for example, uh, Senator Lee uh, yeah. of Utah may not be on the short list, but a lot of people think that he would be a superb uh, of justice because he has experience both in law and in mm -hmm. politics. There are others who are on the big list, but not on the short list. Don't be surprised if the president uh, deviates from the short list and comes up with a name that has not been mostly right. debated in That'd the media. Interesting. But look, he's interviewing yeah. people. He's not going to pick somebody who he hasn't interviewed. Yeah. So if go. we know who he interviews, okay. we'll know what the list looks like. Thank you, Professor. Right. Appreciate it. And he always keeps us guessing. All That's right. right, Alan, thank you.